Hello there, boys and girls. Welcome to ITTV. In our lesson today, I'll be explaining to you about the concept of circles. Circles is a very beautiful subject. Especially in today's lesson, I'll be elaborating further about the concepts of symmetry, chords and arcs. Well, boys and girls, let us look into some of the common uh, factors or some salient features about circles. The first fact is, a circle has an indefinite number of diameters and each diameter is an axis of symmetry. What it tells us is that if you look into a picture of a circle and if a line were to be drawn going passing through a center that is known as a diameter as such you can draw infinite number of diameters that goes through the center therefore the diameter of a circle is infinite that is the first fact second fact is each diameter is an axis of symmetry and what is an axis of symmetry axis of symmetry is if i have a line that passes through the diameter if i were to fold the circle it will be divided into two equal halves that is the concept of axis of symmetry next symmetrical properties of circles in this uh, properties what are the features that we need to learn firstly a radius that is perpendicular to a chord divides the chord into two equal parts and vice versa. If you look into the diagram, we have a picture of a circle. We have a radius extending from the center up to the circumference. Then we have a chord. The concept is, if I have a radius, it cuts the chord into two equal halves. Please remember students, this particular concept comes out in your exams quite frequently. Next, the second concept is the perpendicular bisectors of two chords intersect at the center of the circle. If you look into this diagram now, we have a circle, we have radius from the center, we have two radius and we have perpendicular lines that is from the radius up to the chords. Therefore, what they are trying to tell us here is the perpendicular bisectors of two chords intersect at the center of the circle. Meaning, if I were to take these two bisectors and if I extend it to the center, it will be divided into two equal parts. Next concept, two chords of equal length are equidistant from the center of the circle and vice versa. Let's look into this concept. We have a circle in front of us. We have a radius, but it is partial radius because it is not touching the circumference. Now, if you look into the picture, what they're trying to tell us here is two chords of equal length are equal, equidistant from the center of the circle and vice versa. So if I have a line from the center extending up to the chord, now, since they are equidistant, therefore, that particular line will also be equidistant. This is also equally important because exam questions is very favorite in this particular area. What we are trying to suggest here is, if I have two chords of the same length, therefore, the arcs are also of the same length and vice versa. Meaning, if the arcs are of the same length, then the chords should be of the same length as well. Well, let's now turn our attention to some of the common questions in your examinations dealing with chords, arcs and the rest. Let's look into this question. Firstly, the diagram represents a tunnel through which a train passes. The line AB being where the track lie. Now, if you look into the picture, we have the diagram of a tunnel. The question is, 
if the radius of the tunnel is 5 meters and AB is 8 meters, find the height of the tunnel above AB. So how are we going to do this question? Obviously, this question involves concepts of circles and issues of radius, arcs and the rest will come into play, which I will be showing to you in the board in a short while. Well, boys and girls, if you look into our question here, we are given part of a tunnel. The tunnel is A, B and this curve on top. All at the bottom, not been given in the question. All right. Now, what are the information given? We are told the length of A, B is 8 meters and the radius of the tunnel is 5 meters. The question is, what is the length of the tunnel above AB? Now, when you talk about the length of tunnel above AB, we are talking about this height here. All the way from here. So I just put this as the height that we are finding for. This is the height of the tunnel above AB. Now, if you look into the question proper, we are only given part of the tunnel. As a wise student, what you should do here is, we know for a fact tunnel looks uh, in the shape of a circle. All right. So what I have done here is I have created all this dotted line to incorporate all this to become a circle feature. All right. Now, why did I do this? Now, I'm doing this because in order for me to find the height, all right, what information has been given? We are given the radius of the tunnel. Now, the radius of the tunnel is from O all the way to B. Now, why I've created this? Because ultimately, I'm going to use Pythagoras theorem to our uh, assistance in order for me to find the height. All right. Now, the first step here is I got to understand few uh, concepts. Firstly, now, since I've drawn these dotted lines to form a circle, therefore, the center of the circle is O now. Now, if I look at this line here, OC, it only stops halfway through in the tunnel. What I have done here is I have extended the line all the way until your circumference. So therefore, this can be considered as your radius as well. All right. So therefore, let me indicate another alphabet here. Let's say this is D here. Okay. So therefore, OD is also your radius. And what is the concept when you have a radius cutting your cord? Now, if you have a radius, it cuts the cord into two equal halves. Into two equal halves. So therefore, the length of AC would be 4 meters. CB will be 4 meters. Now, I've also created a triangle, a right angle triangle to be very specific. Why? Because I need to find the length of OC. Now, let me indicate another alphabet. Let's say this is E. All right. So OE is also a radius. So I have no problem on this portion. That is also a 5 meters like your radius at OB, which is also 5 meters. Now, question is, how do I get the answer for OC? In order for me to find OC, I use the concept of Pythagoras theorem. So I put OC square equals OB square minus CB square. For me to find OC, I got to take OB square minus CB square. So I have 5 square minus 4 square. That should give me a 9. So therefore, OC equals to square root of 9. That should give me 3 meters. So therefore, the length of OC is 3 meters. Finally, therefore, the length of tunnel above AB would be 5 plus 3. 5 plus 3, that should give us 8 meters. All right? So our final answer for this question here is the length of tunnel above AB is 8 meters. Let's move on to our next question then. In the diagram, O is the center of the circle. OX is equals to OY is equals to 12 cm and AB equals DE equals 10 cm. 
find the radius of the circle. Well, boys and girls, let us now look into our final question. Question is, what is the radius of the circle? What are the information given to us? We are told that OX equals to OY, which is equals to 12 cm, and AB equals to DE equals to 10 cm. Let's look into the uh, given circle. Now, we are told the length of AB and DE is equals to 12. OX equals to OY. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are told that OX equals to OY which is equals to 12 cm. So we have OX, O is the center of the circle, O up to X is 12 cm, likewise O up to Y is 12 cm. AB equals to DE, AB, the length of AB is equals to the length of DE, which is equals to 10 cm. Now, question is how do we find the radius of the circle? Now, what you must understand here is, firstly, where is the radius? Now, if you look into this question, what I've done here is I've extended this dotted line all the way from O to A. This is one portion of the radius of a circle. Now, why I have created this dotted line? Because the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this right angle triangle. If you follow me very closely, I'm going to use this right angle triangle all the way here. Okay, right angle triangle. Now, in order for me to find the radius, that is OA is the radius, I need to know OX as well as AX. OX is not a problem because it has been given in the question. Now, what about AX? Now, to obtain AX, what I need to do here is, I have to extend this line in dotted forms all the way to the circumference. Now, why am I doing this? Because I'm creating this concept called whenever you have a radius that cuts the chord AB is the chord yeah when a radius cuts the chord it cuts into two equal halves it cuts into two equal halves and we know the length of the chord AB is 10 cm given all right so if it cuts into two equal halves that means one half would be 5 cm the other half would be 5 cm so therefore I have 12 for OX and AX as 5 cm. Question is, what is OA? All right. Now I've already done the workings here. OA is the radius. So therefore, in order for me to find OA is the radius, I'm going to employ Pythagoras theorem here. So the formula here is OA square equals AX square plus OX square, which is equals to 5 square plus 12 square. That should give us 25 plus 144 equals to 169. So therefore, OA itself equals to square root of 169. That should give us 13 centimeter. So therefore, this is how we attempt this particular question. All right. Now, if you get a question like this in your examination, look into the valuable information at hand given to you. Pick up all the information given to you and then you insert into your respective formulas or theorems in this particular question. I hope you have taken down all these important notes for your own benefit. I hope to see you in another exciting lesson to come. Until then, bye from me.